gals, non-binary pals, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm not wearing a hat. Crazy. Uh, also, if you would like to join these lovely people here on the side of the screen, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, you guys should come hang out. 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There's always a link down in the description of all the videos. Uh, and you can come here and, and scream at me and yell at me and say how I'm wrong in real time. It's a great time. And uh, maybe some, maybe you'll agree with me. I don't know. Uh, but most of the time, they just yell at me. And they're just bullies. But it's fine. Uh, okay, so today we are going to be talking about two of our favorite people um, that we've ever talked about on the channel. So, uh, Abby Sharp, who is a very well-known YouTuber, dietitian, I guess is probably a better way to describe her. She did a video talking about uh, Jillian Michaels, who... <laughs> Jillian Michaels. Oh, she's bless her heart, you know. Um, so <laughs> this video, I'm sorry, is Nate is titled Dietitian Reacts to Ex Biggest Loser Trainer Jillian Michaels Condescending Diet Tips. So y'all know when we got condescending in the title, it's going to be a spicy one. So let's see what Abby has to say. All right, let's get into it. Oh, boy. This one's gonna be a doozy. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome. Oh, whoopsies, I had it on two times speed because your boy, you know, I don't, I can't watch on normal, but everyone gets mad when I uh, speed these videos up. So sorry about that. Here we go, okay. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Aura, and we'll be reviewing ex Biggest Loser personal trainer, Jillian Michaels. But first, let me tell you about my sponsor, Aura. As you Sorry. on busy days. So if you want to explore just some gonna, new self-care strategies, I'm just gonna skip through that a little bit. Video, All right. It's not supportive to your journey. And if you are new here, ring that bell so that you never miss out on a video. All right. I mean, you can do it for her channel, but you could also do it for this one, you know? Hit that thumbs up, ring the bell, Leave a comment, leave a like, why not? Folks, as a quick little introduction, Jillian Michaels is basically the OG fitness influencer and has made her mark in the fitness industry through media appearances on talk shows and TV shows, most notably her stint on The Biggest Loser. I love that the way that she explains her is she's like the OG fitness influencer and truly with the stuff that she says now, <laughs> that is such a good way to describe <laughs> who Jillian Michaels is. <laughs> like, that's so perfect. <laughs> She's also released countless fitness books and DVDs, hosts her own podcast, and even has a highly rated fitness app. So yeah, the girl stays busy. Even though Jillian is basically a household name in the fitness industry, she has come into some hot water for her controversial tough love approach to weight loss and dieting. So I do want to say, before we get into the Biggest Loser clips, because everyone loves these, these are very old, right? But I know that there is going to be uh, comments that are saying, she just says that stuff to be over the top to get people to talk about her, and you're not wrong. Like, I'm sure she knows that when she is over the top and very loud and bombastic and rude and mean, that gets people to talk about her and that gets her name in more people's mouths and that, that therefore sells more things, right? I am not stupid. I understand that. Will that stop me from making a YouTube video? No, okay? <laughs> Are you ready to work? Are you ready to work? There's honestly a lot of stuff. I'm sorry, but I just like, I'm just imagining like the, <laughs> just, like the, the camera people just like, Okay, well, I guess I have to film this. <laughs> Is Are you going to keep yelling like that? Like, it's a little intense, don't you think? <laughs> that I could discuss when it comes to Jillian. But I'm really trying to keep these videos shorter. So today, I'm going to focus on her latest What I Eat In A Day video. And when I say latest, I mean at the time of filming, which, as you guys know, is far in advance. So who knows? She could have an updated one since I filmed this. Let's take a look. I'm the common sense diet. I don't overeat. I eat. Okay. So the common sense diet. All right. That's my term. All right. Jillian, if that is your real name, I don't, I don't appreciate you stealing my, my terms. Okay. I'm, I need to copyright the common sense diet. And in my opinion, her diet is not common sense. Okay. I'm just saying. I eat all three macronutrients and I try to avoid processed food 80% of the time. I try to make 80% of my food choices good ones and 20% of my food choices are 
that's so great. Uh, and that keeps me sane. Okay, so I know the 80-20 rule is more of a colloquialism at this point than an absolute percentage split, but I still never love the concept myself because I do think it dichotomizes food into good and bad categories. Like even processed food should not be so easily divided. I'm not sure if she knows this, but yogurt, wine, bread, canned beans, all healthy foods that she mentions in this video are actually considered processed foods. Having So I really like, I mean, as I think a lot of you guys have seen, like as Abby has made content, like the longer that she's made content, the more I've seen myself agreeing with a lot of the stuff she says. And, and this is one of the points that I really, really agree with. I really, really hate when um, people kind of, they, they, they make some foods good and they make some foods bad. And it gives you this weird feeling of like, there's certain foods I'm allowed to eat and there's certain foods I'm not allowed to eat. And when I eat certain foods, I'm being bad and mysterious and mischievous and I'm cheating. But when I eat the good foods, I'm being good and I'm doing good on my diet. I really don't love that framing when it comes to a diet as well. So I really love the way that she explains this. Having said that, I think of having structure like this helps to keep her sane while also ensuring that she can maintain her fitness goals because yes, I acknowledge that fitness is kind of her livelihood. Then I think that this definitely does make some sense. And if it works for her, it works for me. I eat complex carbohydrates with lots of fiber, whole grains, beans, legumes, fruits, vegetables. I eat uh, healthy fats, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, and a little bit of saturated fat, not a ton, uh, but I get some. I can't believe it. She eats saturated fat, you guys. I mean, honestly, should we even watch this video anymore? Probably not. <laughs> My protein is ideally wild caught fish, grass fed, grass finished beef. I don't really compromise on that. Okay, lots to discuss here. First of all, I really love that Jillian is talking about getting in all her macros and she's focusing on high quality sources as well. Higher fiber carbs, like she mentioned, are energizing and promote better regularity, satiety, blood sugar control, and heart health. Ditto for polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats over saturated fats. Now, as for an occasional grass-fed beef meal, I actually think that that's a great choice. I mean, I think we can all stand to reduce our reliance on red meat. And if you do choose to incorporate red meat into your diet, to do so sparingly. As for the grass-fed versus conventional grain-fed argument, a grass-fed beef will contain about five times more omega-3s and twice the conjugated linoleic acid or CLA content, which is also associated with reduced risk of heart disease and obesity. And while it is generally more expensive to go this route, I think if you're limiting your intake to a once month burger you can perhaps be a little bit more splurgy it's a ham <laughs> hamburger made out of meat on a bun with nothing i really <laughs> that's literally how i cook <laughs> my meals are so basic like when i make sandwiches bro you think i'm putting i'm gonna cut up a tomato and some lettuce and some onion no all right put some meat on there maybe cheese and mustard that's it all right we're moving on but so what? Uh, I'm sorry. What Abby was saying um, before, I know she's a she's not a huge fan of red meats. So that's kind of what what she was going into there. I personally don't eat much red meat in my diet, but I don't know. Like it's not something that I really focus on too much. Um, but again, there's a lot more that we'll get into. I know I kind of just didn't say much about that, but I just don't really have much to say there try to get wild caught fish sockeye salmon in particular all of the great nutrients and the omega-3s that come from wild salmon especially things like salmon there are some things that are okay farmed but a lot of it has food dye and a bunch of garbage like read about it first of all <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i just love the like there's just a lot of bad stuff just read about it all right i don't want to explain it read about it figure it out all right it's not my job to <laughs> explain it but the thing that I'm noticing here, a lot of the stuff that she's explaining, it feels very elitist. It feels very uh, eh, classist, maybe to a certain extent. Like, it's like, these are, you need organic, grass-fed, non-dyed, super phytonutrient-infused foods, and this is how you can be healthy. The reason I really dislike when people go on these, like, because she's just like, I'm explaining my diet, and this is how I stay the way that I am. 
And it makes people think, especially because a lot of her following is still people that are trying to lose weight, right, from The Biggest Loser. It makes people think they need to buy all of these grass-fed options or it has to be organic. It has to be this. It has to be that. Because if I eat the non-organic thing, oh, my God, I'm going to die, right? I, I just really, really dislike that, especially for me coming from when I was younger, like we were – very poor okay i used to say broke and i i had people challenge me they're like hey you say broke but like just be honest right we were poor okay like like almost homeless at times um like not having much money right and so it frustrates me because i know what it's like to grow up like that and there was a lot of times where i used to think i can't eat healthy or i can't eat healthier because it's too expensive and it's just not true you know i just I, that really bothers me. It just really bothers me when people like talk like that. I want to start by saying any salmon, wild or farmed, is a nutrient-dense choice rich in heart-healthy omega-3s. That alone gets thumbs up from me. But, if you but also, cooked seafood is disgusting, so you just don't eat it and then you'll be fine. I want to break down further. I would say that wild salmon is considered nutritionally superior because it has slightly more calcium and iron, less total fat and saturated fat, and a better omega-3 to 6 ratio. It also has slightly fewer calories compared to farmed. Now, there's also concern that farmed salmon contains higher amounts of contaminants like PCBs and dioxins, but these compounds are ultimately found in both. And the current consensus is that the health benefits of consuming fish definitely outweigh the risk. Now, mercury levels are. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just thinking when they talk about farm salmon, I'm thinking of like a salmon on a tractor with like a hat on and overalls with like a, a, th a straw coming out of its mouth. I'm sorry, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> are generally low in all salmon, so that's not particularly a concern. But antibiotic use in some fish farm regions continue to be a big problem. Canada, for example, has worked very hard to reduce their antibiotic use, whereas Chile, which is the world's second largest producer of farmed salmon, still relies heavily on antibiotics. So if you're choosing a farmed salmon product, ideally you wanna look for a product that's been certified by a regulatory organization. For example, look for Aquaculture Stewardship Council, Global Sustainable Seafood Initiative, or the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood food watch cage-free organic eggs okay i'm just going to intercept here because i'm hearing the o word a lot and not the good big o that we really like abby she's getting wild okay all right that's what she said <laughs> i'm talking about organics now this is such a complicated debate and I think its merit really depends on the food category and also where the food is being sourced. I don't associate with anyone who eats conventional food. I'm in a social class above that. But for that that's a joke, but like also true. <laughs> For a very quick overview, I actually discussed this in a little bit more detail in my Sorel Amor video right here. Now, in the case of eggs, it does feel like there are so many qualifying terms now that it can feel very overwhelming in the grocery store. I came here for the same reason people go to the zoo. Caged eggs are eggs that, very simply put, come from... Okay, so I'm going to read this. I want to read this out. So it says, caged eggs, hen hens can freely roam a building, room, or enclosed area, but not have access to the outdoors. Free range, hens have access to the outdoors. They may or not may or may not use it, though. Like, I won't go out there. Why would I go out there? Organic eggs, cage-free hens who have some access to the outdoors and who are fed an organic diet free of conventional pesticides and fertilizers. All right, just so you all know. From hens that are not caged. According to the USDA, the hens can freely roam a building, room, or enclosed area, but do not have access to the outdoors. If that was your preference, you would want to be looking for free range and or pasture fed, which is not a regulated term. But organic eggs are from cage-free hens who have some access to the outdoors and who are fed an organic diet free of conventional pesticides and fertilizers. Are these specialty eggs healthier than conventional? Well, when CBC Marketplace tested a variety of conventional and organic options here in Canada, they found that while organics did have more omega-3s than conventional, there otherwise weren't any major nutritional differences. But if- 
but they're also more expensive so they make you feel like you're better than someone else you know that's the most important thing if you're concerned about humanely raised hens my suggestion would be to get to know a local farmer and buy directly from them i do organic grass-fed yogurt okay all right we need to have a conversation here all right she does organic grass-fed yogurt all right i don't know where she's getting her information from but i i don't think that yogurt eats anything you know I think that yogurt, uh, unless I'm conf I whenever I open a, bo a box of yogurt or a bottle of yogurt, I don't see a mouth or anything for it to eat. Maybe where maybe these yogurts that she is buying are so expensive they have like little families and they have little jobs and they eat grass only. That's pretty crazy, man. Also, that's a joke. For anyone that's like, oh, what an idiot. He thinks yogurt. I'm joking. Okay. All right. Intercepting again because, again, organic. <laughs> and in this case, grass-fed as well, which, like I mentioned before, does have a slight nutritional benefit over conventional dairy. So grass-fed dairy tends to have higher amounts of omega-3s and CLA and lower amounts of omega-6 and saturated fat palmitic acid. Now, organic dairy does differ from conventional, at least in the States, in that it's produced without any antibiotics or added hormones. Now, obviously these attributes come at an added price, but I just want people to know that both conventionally produced and organically produced dairy is considered safe. Ultimately, this comes down to budget and personal preference. Like so a lot of the stuff that we're seeing in this video, right, is stuff that I have, and I know Abby does too, but like stuff that I've criticized and big reasons why, one, I don't really do many full day of eating videos, but when I do, I try and make it as, not, I don't try and make it, I'm just as real as I, I just eat what I actually eat. I show you what I actually eat. And the stuff that I eat is not special. There's nothing organic about it. There is, like a lot of times I use the microwave to cook my meals. There are a lot of like, shoot, one of the last videos I put up was a diet soda tier list, all right? You, you all know I'm not sitting around here drinking only organic things and eating only organic things it frustrates me to no end when people that have a big platform like this they just they have a big platform and they have a lot of money that's also a very big important part of it they go on and they just talk like this is super normal that everyone can do this or should do this when in reality a lot of the people that are following you can't do that and you're just making it's like a way for you to explain what you're eating but also make you feel better than the other people that are watching. And it's just so frustrating to me. Like, there's an organic Cheeto. Um, I'm not getting paid for this. It's called Luke's, Luke's Lightning Bolts. It doesn't have a ton of chemicals in it. So if I have like a half a cup of it with a sandwich or a salad, the world's not gonna end, right? Is it a health food? No. Is it gonna fight cancer? No. Is it gonna cause it? I mean, not if you eat a tiny bit of it. This is where the argument for organics feels a little shaky to me. It's called the natural fallacy. The belief- Oh, you can't afford all my expensive foods? Well, sorry, you're gonna get cancer. Sucks for you. That's what I just heard. <laughs> that just because something is more natural that it gets a free pass. It's like the mom who calls Oreos poison. What kind of poison did you use? Dwight, I didn't poison you. I was kidding. But we'll buy her kid <laughs> organic cream filled chocolate cookie sandwiches, no problem. I'm not demonizing cookies of any variety, but they're still cookies. Now, also, I want to make it clear that I'm not demonizing these Cheetos. These sound amazing and totally something that I would buy. And I agree, they're not going to cause cancer. Not even if you eat the whole bag. It's not going to cause cancer on its own. But you know what? <laughs> Neither is this. When we compare the ingredients- What are you talking about? That's crazy. You're telling me if you eat a bag of Cheetos, you're not going to get cancer immediately? Unbelievable. We've been lied to. Ingredients in the organic Cheetos versus like a regular Cheetos, we can see that the organic ones do not contain any food dye. So that may be important to you if you are allergic or if you want to avoid looking like a chain smoker. Now, the organic Cheetos also contain some real cheese in addition to the cheese flavor in there, which again- I think it's really interesting that you put up the, like, the ingredients of both right next to each other because like, <laughs> these are okay, but these ones, no, 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 okay? You can't have monosodium glutamide, but you can't have 
organic and natto extract, okay? That's all right. You're not allowed to have maltodextrin, but you can have organic tapioca maltodextrin <laughs> and also disodium phosphate, okay? That's allowed. And might actually rule these out if you're concerned about artificial flavors. But otherwise, when comparing the organic versus regular Cheetos, both have basically the same amount of fiber and protein and almost the same amount of calories. So despite the health halo, no Cheeto is going to fight cancer, like she says, nor will they single-handedly cause cancer. <laughs> I'm sorry, just the thought of no Cheeto is going to fight cancer. So it's <laughs> I'm sorry, just like someone that's struggling, just being like, did you, did you eat the Luke's Cheetos? Have you tried the Luke's? I'm sorry, okay, I'm... Either, even if you eat more than a tiny bit of it, or if you eat the non-organic version. So I say, choose a snack that you enjoy and eat it in the context of a balanced diet, which it does sound like she does. It's just too bad that it seems to come with so much moral baggage. Generally, it's about four drinks a week tops. And I do red wine, white wine, and sake. Don't really do much else, because I want the health benefits if I'm gonna drink, and I drink in moderation, because Studies have shown us that up to a glass a night or six drinks a week have health benefits. Okay, so obviously I agree. It's a good call to drink in moderation. I don't know where I felt like I get a little drink around. Right? Here, do you, bud? And she is right that most of the literature suggests that light to moderate drinking has some health benefit, but heavy drinking has health risks. Now, I don't think that this research is reason to start drinking if you don't already drink, because there are- Nope, I'm starting. I don't drink right now, but Jillian Michaels said, you need to start drinking to be healthy. That's what's up, dude. I'm gonna start doing it right now. Way more nutrient dense ways in your diet to get those same benefits. But if you're enjoying a few drinks a week, I don't see a huge concern. I don't overeat. I balance the amount of calories I take in with the amount of calories I put out. So I eat about 1800 calories a day. If I work out particularly hard, I eat 2000 calories that day. Well, if I've worked out extra hard, I can eat a little bit more. I can have the treat food. Um, so I'd say that 1800 to 2000 calories a day sounds likely adequate enough for Jillian's needs. And she may even need a bit more than that, depending on her physical activity. Now, while I want to trust that Jillian knows her body best and will provide it with the fuel that it needs, this is her profession. She has also made some controversial comments about intuitive eating that I'm going to talk about in a minute. And also about discussing manipulating her weight down to a very specific number. I don't know. I have to question how in tune she actually is with her true needs also I don't dang she went for it right there Whew. i don't know who needs to hear this but you can still have a treat food even if you didn't work out extra hard i just don't think it's healthy to be thinking about everything in our day as this kind of transaction you know add the have a couple bites of my kids mac and cheese it's organic oh gosh jillian I feel really sad for people who worry so much about others' validation and appraisal of their diet that they need to justify having a bite of their kid's food to absolute strangers. And honestly, I feel worse for people who have small enough lives that they actually give a f Jillian? <laughs> All right. Okay. No, but I, dude, that stuff, oh, it's so cringy to me. I had... I had a little, I had a little bite of the mac and cheese. I know I'm so bad. It's like, no, dude, you're no, a human being. <laughs> My dear, no one will judge you for eating non-organic mac and cheese. I wouldn't even judge you for eating a whole box. Mama said that it like, there are a lot of bites that make up a day to be worrying about what everyone thinks about each and every one. I generally- yeah. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Jillian, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Eat same three things for breakfast. I'll have either eggs, scrambled eggs with a little bit of organic cheese or eggs over easy with two pieces of organic whole grain toast. Let's go organic baby. Let's go. Is it organic stove that you use? Are you using organic fire? You better not be spraying anything that's not organic on top and using organic salt and organic pepper, all right? And you better be drinking organic water.
eggs with veggies or eggs with a little bit of fruit on the side, but I'm getting protein, fat, carbs, right? If we were to take a shot, <laughs> every single time Jillian said the word organic. I'm not sure I'd make it to the end of this video. Oh my God. But honestly, playing the organic card in every breath is starting to feel a bit more like an elitist flex than a teachable moment, and I'm not feeling it. I'd like to tell you about the benefits of eating organic. I'm not interested. But. I will say organic or not, this breakfast does sound solid. Like she says, we've got some protein and fat from the eggs and the cheese and carbs from the toast and fruit. For my lunch, I'll usually do protein salad. It could be like a taco salad, for example, maybe with shrimp. So it has the black beans, the shrimp, some salsa on top, all my veggies mixed in. Occasionally I'll have a sandwich, but it could be even grilled fish tacos. I'm low key a little relieved that we didn't hear the big O word here, but I'm sure there's more of that to come. Having said that, these are all great options for lunch because like she says, she's all about hitting all three macros at most meals. And while she didn't specifically mention like sources of fat, I would definitely be adding in like some guac to those tacos or salad and maybe a nice little pesto or cheese to the sandwich. For a snack, um, I'll usually have an apple. I don't really like almond butter. I recommend it because it's good for you, but I don't really like Oh my gosh, you're so bad, Jillian. Woo -hoo -hoo. You're such a you're such a spicy senorita. Woof. Oh my goodness, you don't really like it, but you recommend it. Oh, so bad. So I have organic peanut butter, like an apple and peanut butter, or like a piece of fruit and an organic cheese stick, a little bit of trail mix, some dry roasted nuts and a piece of fruit. But basically again, the protein, fat and carbs, I keep it super simple. First of all, it makes me kind of sad to hear almost like the embarrassment and shame in her voice when she admits to eating or liking something that doesn't conform to her food rules. Like a bite of her kid's mac and cheese, or in this case, the peanut butter. Folks, peanut butter is great. Ah. It's actually all in one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that little guy. He's so cute. <laughs> okay. We have to watch it just one more time, okay? We just watch just one more time. Waste when she admits to eating or liking something that doesn't conform to her food rules. Like a bite of her kids' mac and cheese, or in this case, the peanut butter. Folks, peanut butter is great. Ah. It's <laughs> Y'all didn't know that's actually Jillian Michaels. <laughs> actually an all in one hunger crushing combo and it has more protein than other nut butters. I don't know why everyone demonizes it, but the girl obviously does know how to build a balanced snack. And ultimately I'm just glad she's not forcing herself to eat something that she hates. And dinner, same, like tonight I'm gonna go get sushi. So what am I gonna have? I'm gonna have- she's gonna be yeah you guys get ready she's gonna be she's gonna be bad she's gonna share one of her one of her little little treats it's so bad you guys who you have no idea I have a uh, yellowtail sashimi with jalapeno I'm gonna have uh, probably six pieces of sockeye salmon sushi I'm going to have a seaweed salad um I do get the spicy tuna roll they tell them no mayo and then when I go for something oh she gets the spicy tuna roll with no mayo like cheap food, I'll split a soft shell crab roll. <laughs> Your cheat food is a split of a soft shell crab roll? Okay, I know I've been very petty, but this is something, and this is all speculation, so take this with a grain of salt, but I personally feel she might be lying. Like, that's just my opinion. The reason I say that is because I know I've done my own full day of eatings, and I've talked about this in the past many times where I would lie about what I ate because I wanted to seem good for the people that were following me, and I wanted to seem like I was a good influence, when in reality that was only hurting people because it made them feel like they had to eat that way. But I have friends that do full day of eatings. I know what it's like to 
Go throughout your day and show what you're eating and feel like you have to be good on that day because you don't want to show these things that are not quote unquote healthy. So I would not be surprised again, allegedly think this is all alleged, right? I would not be surprised if this is not even how she ate all the time. And this is just some made up thing to make her look good and make it seem like she knows what she's talking about. Like I, tr I really do believe that that's all. Okay. So I just want, just wanted to say that. I love sushi because I think it's inherently quite balanced with the fat and the protein and the fish and the carbs and the rice. But do we really need to call half of a soft shell crab roll cheap food? Now, aside from the fact that we have got to stop moralizing foods with this language. If you're doing it, stop it. A half of a soft shell crab roll has like 150 calories. I think we're gonna be okay if you have the whole roll as your alleged cheap food. Oh, this is exhausting. I eat every three to four hours and I create a minimum of a 12 hour fast. And I try to get um, at least a 12 hour window, but I aim for 14 and I do cheat it. I have organic cold brew coffee in the morning is I cheat the fasting window from 12 hours to 14 with heavy whipping cream and you don't break. Okay, this doesn't make any sense. You are telling me that you fast, but at the same time, you're not fasting. Huh? That's not how it works. So just, it's like people like to use the words and say they do these things, but they're not actually doing it, right? Like if you're not fasting, don't say you're fasting for 12 hours. You're not. And guess what? That's fine. It's fine. You don't need to fast for that long. You don't need to fast for 12 hours. You don't need to fast for 14 hours. It's okay. But why are you lying to yourself with heavy whipping cream saying that I'm still fasting? No, I'm sorry. That's not how it works. <clears throat> the benefits of that overnight fast. Uh, are you going to tell her or am I? Because I, I, I did it. Don't worry, Abby. I, I had it. That will actually break a fast. It might not kick you out of ketosis, but most of the benefits of ketosis aren't actually seen on super short overnight bouts like this, as it usually takes two to four days to get into ketosis to begin with. Also, heavy whipping cream, while high in fat, still contains small amounts of protein and carbs. There's a lot of things wrong with this little hack. <laughs> Also, some research suggests that you can still reap the alleged benefits of intermittent fasting. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like, you guys, in case you didn't know what I've been doing for my diet, the way that I have been losing weight, all right, you guys need to check this out. I have been doing 24-hour fasts, all right? I actually have not broken my fast in a week. Now, during this 24-hour fast, I eat a couple times during the day, but it doesn't, it doesn't break the fast, okay? It just... It's still, I'm still fasting, okay? So I fast for 24 hours while eating meals in between during it, and then I wake up and continue to do that, and that's how I'm losing weight. It's called the 24-hour fast diet, so you guys can check it out if you want to. Um, really, really good stuff. Highly recommend. Uh, there will be a link in the description. It only costs $1,000. Thanks. All right, make sure you buy that in a modest 12-hour fast. So I would say rather than trying to push yourself into an arbitrary 14 hour fast with whipping cream. I don't know, just eat. That's my eating schedule, which is really important by the way, because if you're grazing all day long, your blood sugar is always high. You want that overnight window where your body is not breaking down food. So it can do housekeeping. I think what Jillian is referring to is the migratory motor complex, which I mentioned in my SIBO and Sam Oscarl videos here and here. Now the MMC is like a broom that helps move food particles through the digestive tract every 130 minutes or so. So you don't actually need to wait five whole hours between meals. It's more like two and a half to trigger this natural cleansing response. And if you're having trouble with blood sugar management, make sure that you're focusing on the hunger crushing combo. You don't need to be holding back on eating between meals if you're hungry unnecessarily. Try to avoid the refined sugars and processed grains and all that crap. Drink in moderation. 
and I promise you'll be fine. Man, does anyone else find her healthy eating is so easy, stop complaining vibe, like super condescending? I mean, I also acknowledge that I- Yes. I have no lived experience in a larger body, but at least I'm not over here suggesting that manipulating your body is an obvious walk in the park. So let's talk about my overall thoughts on Jillian's diet. Now, while Jillian coins her diet as the common sense diet. I Unbelievable. That's my term. I would like royalties. Thank you. I would argue that her way of eating is actually not that common at all. That is, unless you're a whole foods groupie that can afford to eat exclusively organic, grass-fed, cage-free, and wild-caught foods while shaming yourself over a single bite of organic mac and cheese or cheese puffs. Just eat it. Even though her diet sounds- Also, you can't have peanut butter, okay? It's bad. Only almond butter allowed here. Sounds very well balanced and nutritious, of course. It's actually wildly inaccessible for most people. It's also interesting to me that even though she claims to follow the 80-20 rule to keep her sane, she still holds quite a bit of shame when she does give herself permission to eat treat foods, even if they are organic, or something highly nutritious like peanut butter. It's as if she can't just let herself eat a cookie or donut as is without some sort of health halo around it to justify it. With that said, it's really no surprise to me that she dishes out diet culture rhetoric, like referring to meals as cheats or garbage, or suggesting that you need to earn your food through exercise or demonizing inorganic processed foods. So while her body language and tone feels super chill and relaxed, if you listen to the words coming out of her mouth, it's clear to me that she's actually remarkably restrained. And given her controversial commentary on intuitive eating, which largely missed the mark, it's my feeling that Jillian can't really comprehend a relationship with food beyond dieting and weight loss. For example, dang. <laughs> All right, jeez. Example, in her video about intuitive eating, she constantly describes food and movement from the lens of seeing results and not so much as something that is to be enjoyed or make your body feel good. In her eyes, giving yourself unconditional permission to eat the foods that you enjoy is a sign of lacking self-control. She also denies that diet culture even exists and that our health, aka size, comes down to willpower. In other words, your size is a you problem and is something that needs fixing. Houston, we have a problem. So it's really no surprise that she's hell-bent on suggesting that someone's size determines their health and that someone in a larger body can't possibly be metabolically healthy. And while I don't want to discredit Jillian's expertise, as I do know that she is a highly knowledgeable voice in the fitness space, I personally find her patronizing language around weight loss really difficult to swallow. Not gonna say it again! She has a tendency to overly simplify weight loss and wellness with a real condescending tone as if you should she oversimplifies everything right like and i wonder if i feel like it's because you know when you're on the biggest loser you have to make everything has to be quick fast you have to make it simple for tv you want to make it you know like very very bam 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 and it's it, there's been issues like people she's like talked crap about like crossfit and like said this is the issue these are the issues these are the issues where it's like she's talking about it but it's it's like she doesn't even know what she's talking about at the same time. I don't, it's frustrating. To feel guilty or dumb for not already following these simple rules. As if it's your fault that you can't be thin because, hey, this is common sense. I especially found it frustrating that she attempted to dumb down losing the last 10 pounds to what she describes as a few simple steps like drinking more water, sleeping eight hours, and cutting out booze, which she said, that alone will get it done. Um, raise your hand if you drink a ton of water and you still don't look like her. Jillian. I don't drink a lot of water. I'm going to be honest. I need to do better at that. <laughs> My dear, you need a reality check. But I guess this is also the Jillian Michaels who is caught on camera motivating her clients by telling them that you can't stop unless you faint, puke, or die. Not my style, but appeals to someone apparently. Honestly, I could rant all day, but I will save it for part two if you guys want. So on So that's the that's the whole video right there. Like I said, the, the biggest issue I have is it's just really frustrating seeing stuff like this and it makes it it makes weight loss 
and there's just health and fitness in general always seem out of reach for someone and like something that is very very important to me and i i would hope is very important to a lot of people is that health fitness weight loss all of these things can be attained by anyone regardless of your size regardless of your socioeconomic status regardless of you know where you live all of these things like you can make it work it might look different for you depending on where you are in all of those spectrums but it doesn't make it impossible. And when people make videos like she made and make it seem like you need to eat organic, grass-fed yogurt, sorry, um, and stuff like that, it is, it, it turns it into this elitist thing that makes people feel like they can't afford it or there's no way that they can do all of that stuff. This is why I always talk about the real common sense diet, you know, just like cutting out things like soda, fast food, junk food, things that all of us, no matter what we know or don't know about nutrition, just like very common sense things. And the way that she's eating, again, like like Abby said, it's not very common. Not many people are eating that way. Um, but, you know, again, that's just my opinion, and uh, I wanted to share it. <laughs>